In this video, we're going to see how to connect Visual Studio to GitHub. So GitHub is a place where I have traditionally stored a lot of projects before, either this uh, public GitHub site or an enterprise site inside of the University of Cincinnati. Nonetheless, uh, it's a good place to store things, a good place to share, and also supports a lot of nice features like the ability to create branches, pull requests, merges, and the like. So first of all, I'm going to go to Tools, then Extensions and Updates, and uh, choose online and I'm going to search for github okay and here we go github okay I'll choose the first one github extension for Visual Studio and I'll choose download it requires now that I restart Visual Studio so I'll close and I'll simply restart we can see that it is when I shut down Visual Studio it's now prompting me to uh, go ahead and accept this so we'll say modify and we'll let this run for a few more moments. And now we see a confirmation that the extension has indeed installed. So we'll click close and I'll reopen Visual Studio. Now to access GitHub, I'm going to go to Team and Manage Connections. Notice on the right side here, we have a few options. One of them is Connect to GitHub, or GitHub and then Connect. So I'm going to choose Connect. Now for this, I'm going to use my existing username on GitHub. And of course, my super secret, super secure password. Hopefully I got that right. There we go. And sure enough, now I'm connected. Okay, uh, now that we've connected, we can create a project. And by the way, I did assume that you already have a GitHub account. If you don't, simply go to GitHub and search for a, a create a new account here. I already have one, so I'm simply using my credentials. Notice at the moment I have 15 repositories on GitHub. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose Create and give this a name we'll call it web services which is a project i'll be working on uh, that's fine web dash services is fine why don't i just go ahead and codify that so web dash services description i'll say web services examples local path means where this is uh, stored on my local computer now i'm going to choose create and let's look what happens Remember this number 15 on repositories, because as soon as I refresh, that becomes 16 repositories. And when I click on the repository, we see Web Services, which was created just a few moments ago, 26 seconds ago. Back in Visual Studio, let's go to Team Explorer, and if we scroll down a bit, you'll see Solutions. And from here, we can choose New, and we can call this one uh, Plant Places Web Service, and then choose OK. Then we scroll down, we can see Plant Places Web Service.sln and Solutions Explorer. Uh, you can see this guy here as well. In Solution Explorer, we can click around and see all these files, just like, we, just like any other project. Now from Solutions Explorer, I can go to Team Explorer. Now take a look at changes. If we look at changes, we now see 10 changes. And this indicates uh, our service that we have created and that we're going to push. Now we have to enter a commit message, so I'm going to say initial commit. And notice that now it gives me an option to commit all. Uh, so a few options, commit all, commit all and push, commit all and sync. Now what's the difference? Commit all means we're just committing these changes to our local repository. Commit all and push means we're going to commit these to our local repository and then push to our GitHub repository. Now, note I talked about two different repositories. That's because there's one Git repository living on my local computer, and then there's the one living, in this case, at github.com. Commit all and sync is handy as well. That means commit locally, push up to the GitHub uh, repository, the central repository, and then also pull down any changes that might have happened since our last time. Get all and, commit all and sync is a good idea. Why don't we go ahead and choose that? Go ahead and yes, we'll go ahead and save. Okay, and you see syncing, pulling the current branch, which is the one that I just created. If you take a look up, you can see a kind of message going out. Now it says successfully synchronized incoming and outgoing projects. That makes us happy. So let's take a look now. Uh, notice that as it is before I hit refresh, we only show one commit, which is our initial commit in GitHub. Let me refresh now and take a look. Sure enough, we have two commits. If I take a look at those two commits, I have the initial initial commit that I made when I initially created this uh, repository. And then 
I probably should have given that a better name, but I have uh, the initial commit that I just made. And you see, I can continue to make some changes here. I could make just a silly little change here. And Now, be careful because I know I'm in the synchronization view, but remember we have to commit first. So even though I just made a little change there, uh, let uh, just a couple of little bit of white space. Let's go to changes and we'll notice there's some changes there. Okay, so let's enter a commit message and let's say silly white space addition. Okay, notice that the commit all in sync comes up. So we want to go back to this view anytime we make a change to make sure that we not only synchronize, uh, but we are also committing before we synchronize. If we don't do that commit, then it doesn't recognize that we've made some changes. So let's go back one more time. Let's take a look at our GitHub repository and I refresh and fingers crossed. And sure enough, there we go. Silly white space edition. And what I really like about Git and GitHub is this ability to click and be able to see the differences. So you notice that the red line indicates that uh, the red line indicates something removed. The green line indicates something added, which in this case was just a bit of uh, white space. And then notice this little plus comes up and allows me to make a comment and I can say this change is insignificant. What I like about these single line comments is they allow you, and forgive my misspelling there, they allow you to have a conversation that you document and you cite within the code, but at the same time, it's not part of the code base, so it's not cluttering up the code base. So nonetheless, we now have a project, a Visual Studio project, that we were able to hook up with GitHub very easily. We're able to see our commits very easily, and this becomes a nice way for us to share. I have many more videos on GitHub already, and I'm going to be making several more videos on Visual Studio and web services. So I hope this is helpful, and I hope to see you in those future videos. Thank you.